Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sewn. Today, we're going to be looking at the sides of a triangle and figuring out if it can even be a triangle using what we call the triangle inequality theorem. Let's get into it. So, all we have to do is answer a very simple question. Is it a triangle? And there is a very simple way in which you can do that the triangle inequality theorem, and that really just means that if you add up the two shorter sides, it has to be greater than the biggest side. So if you put the short side and the other short side together, they have to be greater than the longest side. And that is whatever the longest side happens to be. So if I look at this one, if I add up 8 and 17, is that greater than 24? Well, 8 plus 17 is 25. That is greater than 24. And the answer is yes, this is a triangle then. Tad out. That is that simple. So it's important to recognize that it has to be more than the biggest side. Not equal to it. Not less than, but more. Sometimes they try and throw you off where you got the 25 and the 12 here. Those are the two short sides. You have to add those together and see if they're bigger than 35. Well, 25 and 12 is 37. Is 37 more than 35? It is. 37 is greater than 35. So again, this is, yes, it's a triangle. And I think an important thing to say is it can be a triangle. It could just be three random sides floating out in nowhere. All right. Let's try another one. What if we have 28 and 22? Those are the two shorter sides here. Well, if you add those together, you get 50. And is 50 bigger than 50? No. 50 is not greater than the biggest side, 50. Even though it's equal to it, this is still no, not a triangle. It's not possible for that to be a triangle. And therefore, we, we don't have a triangle here. It's not possible. Another way these problems can be presented, however is given two sides of a triangle, you can set up an inequality using the sum and differences to show the range of possible values. So it says using the sum and differences, meaning we can subtract these guys and add these guys together. So let's say if we were missing the biggest side, the longest side, we would know that if we were to add these two short sides, supposing they're the short sides, we would get 14 and 22 makes 36. Okay, well, that means the biggest this could possibly be would be just shy of 36. It has to be smaller than 36. But what if, what if these aren't the biggest sides? What if maybe 22 happened to be the biggest side? So you could subtract these two numbers as well. Instead of adding them, subtract from the bigger number, 22, 14, and we get, uh, what is 22 minus 14? That's 8. So that means that 8 could be the smallest side because 8 and 14, when you add those together, you get 22. So it, it can't be 8. It has to be slightly bigger than 8. And what we're going to do is after we get these two numbers, we just want to figure out, like write the inequality as to what x has to be. Well, it has to be smaller than 36 but bigger than 8. So what we end up doing is we put an x literally in between the 36 and the 8 with the less than symbol going towards the 36. And if you read it backwards, 8, eight is uh, less than x or x is greater than 8. So you put the x in between the two values that it's allowed to be. We're going to do a few other ones. So let's say we had, we'll, we'll do 20, uh, 8 and 31. We're going to subtract these and add these. If we add them, we get the largest possible value that it just barely can't equal it. It can almost equal it. So 28 and 31 makes uh, 59. And we subtract them, 31 minus 28, we get 3. So that means that x is somewhere in between 59 and 3, and you put the x physically in between it with two less than symbols showing that x can't be bigger than 59 and it has to be bigger than 3. So it's in between those two. Now another way that some multiple choice would do it is if the triangle 
has lengths of 15 and 27. Check all the possible lengths for the third side. So there's a few different ways you could do this. You could figure out, um, you could figure out just exactly what is the little inequality, but you could also figure out just by looking at the numbers, adding and subtracting them, if this is a possible thing. So if we have 15 and 27, could I add those together and would it be more than 34? Because if the 34 was given to me, that would be the longest side. 15 plus 27, is that going to be more than 34? Well, yeah, it's going to be a lot more than 34. If we add 15 and 27 together, we end up with, what is that, 42? And 42 is way more than 34. What about if we were to get 12? What about if we had 12 and 15 as the shortest sides? Would that make more than 27, which would be, in this case, the longest side? And the answer is no, it wouldn't. If That is because if we took 27 and subtracted 15, we would find out the shortest possible side that would not be allowed would be 12. Writing the inequality, x would have to be in between the 12 and 42. So it's, it's not going to be 12 because that would make it equal 27, and we can't have that. What about 29? Now that we got this inequality, we could just think, is 29 in between 12 and 42? Yeah. 15 and uh, 27 definitely add to make more than 29. 18 is in between 12 and 42, and 18 and 15 make more than the 27, the longest side that would be there. 43 is bigger than 42. If you add 15 and 27, you're at 42. That means that 43 is just too big. So these would be the only answers that are possible. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. Tune in to more on triangle inequalities about how angles are going to be longer or shorter based off of the side lengths and all of those and how they're connected. Till next time, stay positive and I will see you later.